Welcome back to Staten Island Airfield in another video and today we're going to be talking about this guy. That is my Rotor Riot solderless build in the Skyliner HD frame. Before traveling to Aruba, I started looking at different ways to simplify my FPV setup and to make repairs in the field a little bit more seamless. And when I started looking into it, I was curious about the Rotor Riot, Rotor Riot solderless build and how that would affect my workflow, how it, would uh, blah, 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 how it would affect repairs in the field, and was it worth the slight premium on both the parts and the hardware or the build to have something that's a little bit more plug and play. I figured I'd give it a whirl, see how she flew, see how durable it was, and that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Let's start out with the pros, like I start in every other video, because I do like to start off on a positive note. First and foremost, the drone is incredibly simple to be bleh, the drone is incredibly simple to put together. It is as plug and play as possible. Now I run Crossfire on my drones, so I did have to solder on my own receiver, but that's a pretty easy four little pad solder job. Easy to set up, easy to get going, pretty painless. Overall, the setup was as I expected, to be solderless, plug and play, and just requiring a few screws here and there and we're off to the races. In addition to the setup process being pretty seamless, the tune that comes on the build is very good. It's very conservative. It's not gonna push your drone to the absolute max, but when you're flying freestyle drones, you don't want a tune that's at that bleeding edge because if you nick a prop flying through a tree or a bando, you're just gonna have a bad day and you might not even be able to limp your drone back. Uh, so I tend to run conservative tunes anyway. The tune that ships on it makes it fly well, out of the box and that for me pretty much spot on uh, mine did ship with uh, 4.3.1 at the time that may change but overall i think the tune the setup and everything about it made it great right out of the jump and something i didn't really have to worry about so big thumbs up on the build quality the soldering of the parts on the uh, flight controller as well as the connectors on each of the motors overall i think the build setup all of that Top notch. I think it's a great product and well worth the additional that you spend to get those pre-soldered connectors and the pre-soldered flight controller. In the same vein as build quality from Rotor Riot, all of the components used are very high quality. Uh, the build on the motors, very good, very strong. They've been super durable so far. Uh, I've had no complaints about running the Skyliner frame. I like a frame that's super durable and I can just run into things if I have to, because especially as somebody learning new tricks, new maneuvers, and kind of sending some newer, more tight proximity gaps, I want a frame that can take those punches and keep flying. And the Skyliner is that frame for me right now. So overall, build quality, durability, top notch across the board. On top of that, this is going to be in the pro category because Rotor Riot support for me was flawless. Uh, I had an issue with one of my ESCs where the, uh, I think it was like the right rear motor just started to twitch on arm. It wasn't just instantly firing up. It just kind of like when you'd arm, the rear motor would just twitch a little bit. And I let Rotor Riot know. Uh, they basically sent me a return label. I sent it back. They sent me a new uh, ESC, just slapped it in, plugged all the motors in, and I was off to the races. So the support, uh, the failure wasn't on Rotor Riot. It just, I guess I had a bad FET on a T-Motor uh, F7, but the support on Rotor Riot's end was really, really good, super quick, uh, and super helpful. Uh, we did some basic troubleshooting when I first emailed them. Uh, we flashed a new tune and a new um, firmware onto the ESC to make sure everything was copacetic. Did those steps, it still didn't solve the issue. Did the return, new flight controller, or new ESC. And this is where it comes even, uh, this is where I think that um, the pre-setup piece really comes into its own. To replace that ESC, I just unplugged four motors, unplugged the uh, flight controller plug out of the ESC, plopped the new one in, plugged it in, tightened all the screws down, good to go. Now that I've been overly positive about it, I do want to talk about some of the downsides I see with the Rotor Riot solderless build, uh, starting with the cost. Uh, if you're proficient in soldering and you don't mind soldering, it is an additional price to pay. Uh, is it worth it? That's going to be up to you, but I do think it's a con that it just costs more uh, for effectively the same product. Uh, what you're paying for there is the convenience, and if that is 
a benefit to you, I think it is valuable uh, or worth its value. But if you're good at soldering, you don't care about soldering and you don't wanna spend that extra money, not worth it. And I do think for that, it is a con. Another con is it does limit what you can use. There are only certain motors that come pre-soldered with those uh, MT30 connectors and there are only certain flight controllers that Rotor Riot sets up, or sorry, there are only certain ESCs that Rotor Riot sets up with the solderless build. So if you are gonna choose to go down this route, do know that you're gonna be limited in both your motor choice as well as your ESC and flight controller choice, uh, just cause you're kind of roped into that Rotorite ecosystem. Obviously you can go out and buy MT30 connectors, make your own, uh, sorry, solder your own motors to those connectors. And I do think that's actually not a bad idea if you want the DIY version of this solution. Next downside, and this is gonna be less for the US viewers of this video and more for anybody who lives outside the US, uh, Rotorite is really distributed out of Florida. So when you need customer support, uh, when you need this product, it does come from here. Uh, and you can't like go to any website to grab this stuff. I think FPV, or sorry, Get FPV is going to start stocking some of these pre-soldered components, but if you need replacements, you have to go to Rotor Riot. So whatever the shipping is from Rotor Riot, that's what you're gonna have to wait on. So it does kind of behoove you to keep spares around, whether that's spare motors uh, or a spare flight controller or ESC. It's an additional cost once again, but again, repair parts are less available. You can just desolder those connectors and solder on your own motor. That's obviously an option, but then you're kind of defeating why you paid more for that flight controller or those motors in the first place. That's why this is definitely a con for the setup. I do think if you want, again, it's really for somebody who wants a plug and play, get it going and make repairs as simple and streamlined as possible. And I think it succeeds at that. In succeeding at that, it is gonna cost more parts are less available and you do have fewer choices overall when it comes to the drone. And that's pretty much it. Overall, thank you for joining me today. It's been another wonderful video and hope you learned something about the Rotor Riot, Rotor Riot solderless build. As always, please subscribe, like the video, leave me a comment down below if you've tried the Rotor Riot solderless build, uh, let me know. Uh, or if you've wanted to try, let me know why you haven't jumped in on the in on that train yet. As always, I have my affiliate links down below. They give me a little kickback from Amazon. If you use them, it doesn't cost you anything extra, but help support this channel and grow all the rest of that. I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.